What up, guys? Your boy Quake, and I'm back with a brand new episode of the Diverse Mentality Podcast. This is number 50, man. That's how much time has flown by already. We're not even a year in, and I'm, and I'm on episode 50 already. That's crazy to think about, man. Time flies. We started out with one episode a week. Now it's two a week. So psh, I can only imagine by the time what we do a couple, at, by the one year, which is one year, one year would be October of 2021. So by then, I think we'll be like 70 episodes in, maybe. But that's crazy. Time flies. So um, lots of updates. Uh, some sad news, though, that came out recently. Paul Mooney has passed away at the age of 79. If you don't know who Paul Mooney is, he is a comedian slash actor, uh, most notably on Chappelle's show. He does that skit where, you know, he's with these two white girls and they're at like a, a movie theater looking like chairs or whatever. And then they ask him about movies and what he thinks, you know, and then the white girls say they're what they say. And then he says what he says. And it's a hilarious skit. I'll never forget that skit. And, uh, Let's go over the article. CNN reported that the Paul Mooney, the actor, comedian, famous for starring on Chappelle's show and Bamboozled, has died at 79. A rep for the actor, Cassandra Williams, told The Hollywood Reporter. Mooney's daughter, Spring Mooney, also took to Twitter with the news saying her best friend has died. Mooney passed away from a heart attack on Wednesday morning in Oakland, California. The comedian was from Shreveport, Louisiana, and got his start as a writer for Richard Pryor. He went on to write for the sketch, sketch hit in Living Color and often appeared in skits on Dave Chappelle's Comedy Central show. So rest in peace to Paul Mooney. Condolences to his friends and family. And definitely a legend, man. Uh, a lot of those skits were just something hilarious. That If you ever get a chance to check them out, go ahead and check it out. Especially that, that movie skit that I mentioned on Chappelle's show. But on some more news and updates on rappers, Joe Budden. I'm going to start out again with him because, you know, I just wanted to tie everything up and finish up talking about this. And this is the last part, at least. Joe Button has admitted he was a bad leader. He released a new podcast episode this morning, and he basically admitted that he was wrong. It's really that simple. And a lot of people were expecting him to kind of go crazy and, um, you know, keep attacking more people because there's a lot more that came out after uh, my last episode I did. But no, Kevin Hart went at him, by the way. Kevin Hart said he was a poor leader and that's not the way to handle things. And initially he said he felt like I should have attacked Kevin Hart. Yeah, that's how he felt initially when he heard it. But he said after hearing him, after hearing the sexual assault allegations from Olivia Dope, who was a female on a different podcast show that is hosted by the Joe Budden Network of podcasts, she felt um, sexual assault was happening with her in terms of what Joe Budden did. Basically, Joe Budden on like episode 17 of that show, which is removed now, but it's on YouTube. People ripped it and, you know, did the thing. She basically went on Instagram and said that I've been feeling like this for a while. I was very uncomfortable during that episode because Joe kept pursuing me and said, hey, can I get your number? Because we don't talk outside of this podcast at all. And that he would like to fuck her. All kinds of shit like that. That's just that... If you look at the episode, it was done in like a joking way, but you know how people take in things and how they interpret things is on them. And she felt very uncomfortable and there were some like uncomfortable laughs in that episode. And, um, yeah, so she just revealed that she felt very uncomfortable and there were scenes that were deleted and people were expecting Joe to like go crazy, I guess, against her. But no, he said, she's right. I handled that in a poor situation. And obviously in business, like when, when it's a business setting, especially when it's your business, don't move like that. Even in regular settings, you know, if a female, if a female doesn't like you or gives you signs that she's not interested in you, there should be no, no reason to pursue that because that's a whole handful of problems that you don't want. And in a professional setting like business, she just shows up there. She said, just to do her job. She's not there to hook up with anybody, do anything ridiculous. She just wants to do her job and she felt very uncomfortable and she left. So she's no longer on their podcast on that show. It's called like, I forgot what the show is called, but um, yeah, just a bad, you know, that happened. And then the original Joe Budden podcast co-host at the time, Martina 
I don't know what her name is, Mart Martina Munez or some shit like that. Let me see. Um, I forgot her name, Mart Martina Martina Munez, something like that. Let me see. Let me get her name right. She also then revealed that um, she went out of the podcast because it was just a bunch of conflict and just crazy things. And so Joe Budden basically just admitted that he was wrong, piss poor leadership. And he kind of confirmed what I said the first time I was talking about this in business. You got to sit people down and explain to them. If they don't understand something, it's your job as a leader to explain to them. Now, how they take that in and how they feel about what you explain to them, that's on them. But as a leader, you have to sit down and explain to the people that work for you, the people that are there every day that have questions. You're obligated to explain as much as you legally can. Now, what he, what Joe Budden did say is that Spotify contract, he can't show. Legally, he's you know tied to not being able to show it, and that happens. In legal things, you can't show certain things to people. That just is what it is. If they don't understand that, then you know, it's on them. That's nothing that you can control and be like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they get into arguments. But as a leader, you have to break things down. You have to be patient with people. And you have to understand that not everybody has your mindset. Not everybody is experienced as much as you in a specific field that you're in. You know, some people that get into certain fields, they are experienced, but not as experienced. And you kind of got to break things down. And you got to just send things to accountants and lawyers and Say, hey, talk to the accountants. They know more about this than I do. I'm not an accountant. I've never been an accountant. Talk to them, see what they say, and you know, kind of hand things off to the professionals in that field. If Rory and Maul were asking about accounting multiple times, you know, he did send them to accounting, but apparently what they heard from accounting they didn't like. So, I mean, that's on them. And, you know, you can't control other people's feelings. So there's nothing to get upset about. Joe has really taken a lot of responsibility, which is surprising. And he says he's not going to mend the situation with Rory Mall, but he just said, you know, I'm not mad at them for, you know, anything because he even takes blame for not explaining. As a leader, like I said, you have to break things down for the people that are around you, that are building around you. You have to do that. And you have to have more patience than the actual employee because you're going to be dealing with a lot of different things, not just from employees, but from companies, from scrutiny. If something goes wrong, they're going to point the finger at you. So... Yeah, the whole situation, you know, uh, he said he's done with it. I'm pretty much done talking about it because, you know, he admitted that he's wrong and everything. So that's all you really need to hear in these type of situations. So, and of course, take action on if you're wrong, try to fix things, but if that can't happen. Then at least take accountability as an adult and as a business owner. Uh, Lil Reese. So the updates after the shooting are kind of crazy. There was an update by Fox 32 News that explained exactly what happened because a lot of the information was misconstrued. And, you know, uh, Lowry said he was there just to buy weed and he didn't he didn't steal nobody's car. And other people are saying he stole a car and that's why they shot at him. So this is what Fox 32 News said. The incident began shortly before 10 a.m. Saturday when the 55-year-old father tracked his son's stolen car to a garage in the first block of West Grand Avenue where the son had directed his father by using a GPS tracker in the car and his cell phone, police said. As the father confronted Reese and others inside the car on the third level of the garage, another person appeared and opened fire on the car. A Chicago police, a Chicago police spokeswoman said Monday the motive of the shooter was unclear. So there's going to be quite a few uh, questions being asked on each side. And... You know, if that father is being honest in what he's saying, or he's probably just trying to protect his son, who knows, but it seems like he's being honest, then they're going to go with the father's story. They're going to go with the story that, hey, this car was stolen. Uh, Reese, Reese says that he had no idea he was sitting in a stolen car. He wasn't stealing anybody's car. And the, the results of this shooting, which is crazy, is he got shot in the eye. So... Getting shot in the eye is affecting his his eyesight. Let me see here. Uh, let me get the actual details. Die from being shot. 
Yeah, so Luis has been through some crazy shit, man. He's been getting shot at. That guy's escaped the gulag quite a few times, man. At a certain point, you just got to get tired of this, man. I don't know how, like, just stop doing whatever you're doing. Even, I mean, if he was in a car and didn't know it was stolen, some people just came up to him and shot him, then that's a whole different situation. But, yeah, but he was grazed in the eye by a bullet. And apparently he's blind on that side of the eye. So it says, new details appear to spell out a motive for the incident. Shooting seems to have been triggered by a dispute over a stolen vehicle. Uh, prior to the shooting, a man reported his Dodge Durango had been stolen. Let's see. Video of the aftermath incident taken nearby building shows police arriving on the scene, assessing the situation. Shows Reese bleeding from the mouth while being assisted. So, yeah, I talked about this on the last podcast. Um, why is this saying in Chicago initially believed to be shot in the thigh? So they, they thought he was shot in the thigh, but then he ended up getting grazed in the eye during the shooting. And apparently he's, he's blind on that side of the eye. Yeah. So Reese can barely talk by the way, after the previous shooting, because he went on Instagram live at six, nine. And when he was talking, it was like, it was hard for him to talk. And now he can't see on one eye. So this, you know, that's no way to live at all, man. That's a, luckily you can still walk. Cause I know a lot of people get shot one time and they can't walk all of a sudden. Cause you know, it hits the, the, whatever the spinal cord and all that. And yeah, it turns to a bad situation, but yeah, man, prayers up for little Reese. Hopefully, you know, if he, you know, he didn't really do anything that he's, that they're accusing him of doing. I don't know if he, I don't think he would need to steal a Dodge Durango. I don't know. To me, that doesn't sound like... I would assume Lloris has more money than him having to steal Dodge Durango. To me, that doesn't make any sense. Um, YFN Lucci has surrendered to the Atlanta police on the Bloods gang-related charges. Report a while back that YFN Lucci was hit with a bunch of charges, like 100, with including like 12 other people on charges. It was basically Rico takedown, just like Casanova, just like 6 9 You know, the police ain't stopping. Let's go over the article. YFN Lucci is reportedly behind bars again at Fulton County Jail in Atlanta, Georgia, after turning himself in on Thursday, May 10th. According to WSB-TV, the 30-year-old rapper is currently being held in the institution's maximum security unit. Fulton County Sheriff Pat Labette said Lucci is housed at the facility in a way that keeps both him and the staff safe, explaining we do treat charges more so than the celebrity status and he is currently in our maximum security area lucci was indicted alongside 12 others on charges of racketeering and a warrant was issued for his arrest earlier this month lucci was named in a 75 page 105 count racketeering indictment focused on factions within the bloods gang the indictment is unprecedented period in georgia there's been a huge spike in violent crime. I made a commitment to bring the best and brightest minds here, many of which you see sitting right here right now, so with that we could deal with this issue in violent crime. Yeah, I went over this a couple of weeks ago, but smartest thing to do, man. Turn yourself in. See if you can find ways to get out of this sticky situation. Personally, we always go over this over and over again. I got to keep beating this into people's heads. If you're in a blessed position, man, don't fuck it up by doing something stupid. Don't pull yourself backwards. It's not worth it. It's definitely not worth it. You know, he could have been free right now, making more money from music. Now you can tour because COVID is being less restricted. You know, you're just, uh, it just doesn't make any sense. I know a lot of these rappers have history and ties with a lot of things, but, you know, you as a boss, you got to make it clear that, hey, I can't be, I can't be even in any way, shape, or form connected in this. 150 had the BMF guy come around him at the time, or Buck, I think Buck said that the BMF guy, a big Meech, it might have been Big Meech, or somebody in the BMF crew hung around 50 when he was out and about in Atlanta back in 2003, 2004. Buck brought him on and 50 said, yo, don't bring him around me. And Buck was like, why? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, these guys are street. They're cool, you know. Um, but 50 was like, I don't want anything being tied to my business, to my name, of any street dealings and stuff. And he was right. Like, a year or two down the line, of course, BMF got shut down and everybody got locked up. So when you run a multi-million dollar corporation business 
as an artist, you are a multi-million dollar moving entity, whatever you want to call it. You got to be very careful how you move, man. Every little thing needs to be calculated, you know, precise and just know what you're doing. And if somebody's fucking it up or somebody's doing something stupid, kick them out. It is what it is. They didn't listen and keep it moving. So hopefully YFN Lucci figures out a situation out of this. T.I. and Tiny, man. Accusations of sexual abuse, assault, all that have been crazy, but they've kind of gotten a break and they kind of haven't. So the first accusation was in Las Vegas, I believe. I don't know if that was the first one, but there was uh, sexual abuse allegations in Las Vegas as well. And that has been dismissed. And the reason why is because of statute of limitations, meaning too much time has passed for this to go through. Here's what the article says. Sexual abuse allegations have been mounted against T.I. and Tiny, but the couple have reportedly emerged unscathed in Las Vegas. According to TMZ, a woman claimed she was drugged and sexually assaulted after meeting Tiny at the airport and being invited to hang out with the couple. But the case has been closed due to failing outside the statute of limitations. Due to falling, not failing. Outside the statute of limitations. The alleged incident took place in 2010 and was just reported to Las Vegas Metropolitan PD this month. The LAPD are also investigating the couple after allegedly drugging and sexually assaulting women in 2005. According to a police report, the Los Angeles accuser says she met the couple at a club when she accepted a drink from Tiny. She told detectives she was then invited back to their hotel with two other women, but it ended up being just just her and the couple. The woman claims T.I. and Tiny persuaded her to take a shower with them, with T.I. then leading her to bed, to the bed, turning on a porn video and asking her to rub oil on him. She says Tiny joined in and T.I. then came from behind and stuck his toes in her, okay, that's in her vagina. (laughs) What the fuck? I didn't know it got this detailed. I had no idea it got this detailed. I didn't go that much into it, but that's true. T.I., you some freaky shit, man. What the fuck? When T.I. allegedly went to get a condom, she said she felt sick and went to the bathroom to throw up but claims she blacked out and woke up in the morning with a sore vagina and burning sensation. Obviously, that's fucked up to do, if true. And so when they got a break with the Las Vegas thing, they just got a break from that due to statute of limitations. They said, oh, hell no, they're not getting away with this. The Los Angeles um, police have opened up a new case on them. They're under investigation in Los Angeles for sexual assault and drugging. So police in Los Angeles have opened an investigation into rapper T.I. and his wife, Tiny, over claims of sexual assault and drugging. The Daily Beast can confirm. The woman whose identity is being kept anonymous met with detectives virtually in April, claiming the assault took place in 2005. A spokesperson from the LAPD confirmed that the investigation is active. A second woman, Rochelle Jenks, filed a police report with similar allegations in Las Vegas earlier this month. According to her lawyer, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police will not confirm or deny the investigation was active. So that's the one that got dismissed. Both women were being represented by Blackburn, who is also handling the claims of several other women who have made similar allegations against the famous couple. In March, Blackburn sent letters to authorities in California and Georgia calling for an investigation into his client's claims, describing their allegations as an eerily similar pattern of events of sexual abuse, forced in- ingestion of illegal narcotics, kidnapping, terroristic threats, and false imprisonment. Yeah, man, this isn't looking good, man. If you have multiple women going against you like this, it's definitely not looking good. Right now, the reality show has been put on hold. T.I.'s podcast hasn't been active at all. So, yeah, this is the details here are just horrifying and crazy. If you were to go, if you really want to check it out, uh, the Daily Beast is one that reported the new allegations. And they go into details like, heavy heavy details of a lot of stuff so yeah man uh that's more updates you got a break on the las vegas one but is getting the los angeles one hit up let me get a drink very quick so kevin gates has been off of social media for quite some time so when i saw him trending on Twitter, I was genuinely confused because I was like, what the hell Kevin Gates do this time? Usually when he trends, he says something crazy or, you know, just kind of voices opinion on things that are going on right now or whatever the case may be. 
but he was trending for something something kind of positive, I guess, in a way. Not really positive, but kind of confirmation that Kevin Gates was right down the line. So Kevin B- Gates has been flying under the radar as of late, but he became a trending Twitter topic on Sunday, May 16th, after a clip of a Ugandan singer, Vinka, went viral. In the video, Vinka is performing on, on a South Sudan stage in a red leotard and black stockings when a man in the crowd attempts to grab her private parts. She immediately starts kicking the man until he's no longer a threat to her. Now, why did Kevin Gates trend? Not after, uh, not not long after the clip made the rounds, comparisons between Kevin Gates and Vinka's conduct began popping up left and right on Twitter. In October 2016, Kevin Gates was found guilty of battery in Polk County, Florida, for kicking a female fan during a Lakeland concert the previous year. According to Gates, the woman was attempting to paw at his penis when he didn't, which he didn't appreciate. Nonetheless, a judge sentenced Kevin Gates to 180 days in Polk County Jail with credit for time served and fines and court's cost. He was convicted by a jury of six women after one day of testimony. The alleged victim, Miranda Dixon, Miranda Dixon, admitted to tugging to Gates' pants during the Rumors nightclub concert in August 2015, but maintained in court, I was trying to get his attention for my friend. Speaking to Complex of Time, Gates explained life is about conduct and how we conduct ourselves, but two wrongs never make a right. But I'll say this, I'll use Nicki Minaj again because people tell me the women love her and people love her. If I was to go front row while she was on stage performing and stick my finger in her vagina and she kicked me in the mouth and knocked one of my gold teeth out, I would be wrong. I would be wrong for that. And that I'll say to touch somebody's genitals without their consent is a sexual battery. To touch someone without their consent is a simple battery. So, he did, you know, drop a track about it and stuff, um, but Twitter was happy to basically confirm that what Kevin Gates did at the time wasn't wrong. So, that 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 whole kicking incident that Kevin Gates did, obviously, it's a very aggressive way of approaching something, and if it kept happening over and over again, personally... How I would have dealt with the situation, and this is how any celebrity should deal with situations and not put them put themselves in a bad situation where they can get locked up and just charges against them, is tell your security, man. Why do you pay security? Who are the security around there while you're performing? Tell them, hey, this woman keeps fucking tugging at me. And it's ruining my performance. She's sexually assaulting me right here. You know, she's grabbing at my genitals. P- push her out the way. Get her out of here. Stop, stop having her here be her. Stop the concert. I would have stopped and be like, listen. Security, get her out of here. She keeps grabbing me, you know, and I don't like it. That's the best way to deal with this. Even with that woman in Uganda who kicked a fan. But people were saying for this woman, and this is the double standards for this woman, when she kicked the guy, she was in the right. The guy's a the guy's a pervert. Oh, he why is he doing that? It's disgusting. You don't do that to a female. Blah, 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 right? She kicks him, kicks him multiple times. And everybody's like, yo, that's, you know, yes, Yes, amazing. Shout out to women. They're powerful. That's how you're supposed to do it. But when Kevin Gates did it, all of a sudden there was a problem. He was too aggressive. He was this, you know, what the fuck? Like, you're not supposed to be kicking a woman. That's assault, this and that. Um, When clearly both, a lot of people are wrong in the situation. First off, the person, keep your hands to yourself. That's the number one thing. Keep your hands to yourself. Somebody doesn't want to be touched. Don't touch them, period. There's nothing, there's nothing more to say about that. It's a simple you know, everybody has their personal space. Everybody has how far they're allowing people to come close to them. That's all that is, you know. If you come close to me and I say, get away from me, and you don't leave, technically I'm obligated to smack the shit out of you like the baby does everybody. But, you know, I would probably push you away or just be like, yo, I'm going to step back myself. You know, if I was a celebrity, though, I would deal with it in a whole different way. That's why you have security. That's why you pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for security and who knows, at that concert night, maybe there was a security, they weren't paying attention, but Kevin Gates did kick her, I think, once or twice, and she got the message after that to not touch somebody in their genital area. But what ended up happening is Kevin Gates got sentenced to six months, and then he got a Chicago's weapons charge tied into that while he was locked up and ended up doing like a year and a half, you know, tied in with everything. So... You know, her, I'm sure, obviously, laws on Uganda are totally different in America. We know that, but she's probably not going to face any repercussions for this. But Kevin Gates definitely, I don't think, was in the wrong for doing that. 
Obviously, it was a very aggressive approach. He could have approached it differently, but hey, you're touching places where I don't want you to touch me. Back the fuck up. If I told you already once, back up, and you keep doing it, then you're not respecting me, and then at that point, you've got to use some type of aggressive force. But as a celebrity, come on, man. You guys have security. It's simple, man. Just tell security, hey, get this person the fuck up out of here. Push them back to the show, and don't touch me. Stop the end concert and be like, yo, don't. Listen, this woman keeps touching me. Get her up out of here. And, you know, people are going to clown you. Oh, Gavin Gates, you're a little bitch for blah, 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 or whatever the case. But you know how people are. They're going to be like, oh, he's a male. Why is he getting so offended? When really men can get sexually, you know, assaulted too. You know, some men are not all man whores and want to smash every girl that they see. Some people are faithful. They have wives. They don't want anything going on. Back the fuck away from me. And that's the case in this. So, Here's one tweet that was interesting. I remember Kevin Gates went to jail for kicking the girl trying to grab his dick, and he, he said shit would be very different had he been a woman and a man tried to touch her pussy. But here it is, proven correct. Kevin Gates did the same thing, but y'all said he was wrong. Remember when Kevin Gates did this and everyone said he was wrong? The fact that people can look at the Kevin Gates video and that woman's video and try to decipher a difference to tell you all you need to know about how people view men being sexually assaulted, and that's true. Um, keep your hands to yourself, damn it. Keep your hands to yourself. Your parents should have taught you better. Whoever should have taught you better. You know, that's common sense. 50 Cent, man, he's back on his grimy shit, and he's back on, you know, the route that I like that he takes. So first, the grimy thing, of course. 50 Cent has filed documents to seize Tierra Marie's assets in the revenge porn case. Love and hip-hop personality Tierra Marie and 50 Cent and her ex-boyfriend, a car, a, a bar, Abdul Ahad, and 2018 over revenge porn allegations. But rather than winning judgment, the judge sided with 50 Cent and ordered Marie to pay his roughly $30,000 in legal fees the following year. After multiple attempts to collect his debt, Marie has yet to fork over a single penny to the rapper turned television executive. And now 50 Cent is taking action. According to documents obtained by Radar Online, 50 Cent's legal team filed a right of execution against the Marie to the tune of $37,733. In the latest, do, in the latest documents, it shows the additional 4492 was added to the judgment after Marie was sanctioned in the case and accused of failing to provide answers to questions about her finances. When issuing a right of execution, a court typically will order, order a sheriff or other similar official to take possession of property owned by judgment debater, debitor. In this case, the judgment debitor is Tierra Marie. Marie originally accused Abdul Ahad of hacking into her Instagram account and posting a graphic video that, sure, that showed ejaculating on her face. 50 then reshared the photo to his Instagram account and allegedly placed a filter over the image to the highlight color contrast of semen on her face. He captioned it saying, get the strap, which she took as a threat. 50 insisted by the time he shared the photo, it was already all over the internet. A judge agreed and dismissed all charges. So 50's just trying to get his money for the little... Here's the thing, right? Tierra Marie ended up suing him and saying, yo, why the fuck did you post this? You have no right. And then 50 just defended himself and won. And of course, that costs money to defend yourself. When somebody sues you, you have to pay lawyers to defend yourself. So he paid. He ended up paying about $30,000 just to defend himself and... She's not paying him, you know, he won. She's not paying him that money, which people are like, you know, and 50's even said this. People are like, yo, 50, but you got money, man. Let her slide. He's like, if I let people slide after suing me and I win, everybody's going to sue me. You know, it's the principle. That's what it is. It's the principle. It's not really the money. 37,000 to 50 is chump change. Um, to us, obviously, it's a lot of money. I would pursue the shit out of that because that's a lot of money to me. But to him, it's nothing, but it's the principle. It's you trying to sue me, I win, give me my money and my lawyer. He's not even asking for more. He's just asking for the cost of him defending himself. That's it. So, yeah, now they got Now he's looking to season her assets because she's not willing to pay it, which is stupid. Just pay the 30 grand. You lost. It is what it is. The shit was all over the internet anyways. So you can't really defend, hey, you know, 50 embarrassed me. Like, no, nah, that shit's been all over the whole entire internet at that time. But an, a good thing that's happening is 50 Cent, of course, is moving to Houston, Texas. He revealed that that's his new place that he wants to live at. A lot of business people are moving there because no state taxes. You save a lot of money on taxes. Housing is cheaper. 
less people live there instead of living in California or New York, where they basically kill you in taxes and a lot of people live there. Honestly, the houses that I've been seeing built in Texas have been beautiful. I might even fucking move there. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, 50 decided after announcing he's going to live there, commits 600000 to an education program for Houston high schools, which is dope. Let's go over the article. 50 Cent had fans talking about his recent move to Houston, Texas, after he announced he was switching area codes with an Instagram post on May 5th. The Queens legend has been living it up, winning awards, and embracing the locals. But one of 50's most meaningful gesture came from what he did for the teenagers in Houston. On Monday, May 17th, 50 Cent announced he has joined forces with the Houston mayor, Sylvester Turner, for an educational program intended to assisting to assist three local high schools with low academic performance. Let's see here. For the program, 50 Cent committed 600000 in a partnership with Houston ISD, Horizon United, and G-Unity Foundation that will fund the new G-Star program at the Wealthy Worthing and Kashmir High Schools in Houston. 50's program intends to help students at these three local schools learn various business skills that focus on entrepreneurship while providing the teens with lessons at the college master's level. 50 took to Instagram and posted a picture of himself and Houston officials holding the check worth $600,000. He said, The kids that won't listen to nobody will listen to me. We come out of the same kind of confusion. This program is just going to show them how to win. Mayor Turner added in the statement, this program is another platform to help build the leaders and workforce of the future. Educational opportunities play a key role in Houston's quality of life. 50's educational program has been in development for over two years despite only starting in three schools. The Get Rich Guy Trying Rapper aims to have the program open up in all schools across the country. Shout out to 50, man. I've I've said this multiple times. I like when 50 goes down the route of being more positive. I liked when he was doing that SK energy trying to feed 1 billion uh, hungry kids. And, you know, that just abruptly stopped. If I ever had 50 for an interview, I'd ask him what happened with that because that was, that was a great path. He was focusing less on the bullshit and starting things with people. And he was focusing more on philanthropy, helping people and stuff like that. That, that route, I like more of 50. You know, he's getting older. It's kind of the shenanigans. I know it works for him. Don't get me wrong. A lot of the things he does on Instagram has promoted his shows and he's gotten bigger and bigger because of that because he makes headlines every single time. But as time goes on, man, you just got to get old. You get older and you just get tired of it. I think, you know, this route, going the more positive route, he's going to be viewed at viewed as more of a legend. You know, like Jay-Z, you see how Jay-Z, they put him on this pedestal of like, Yo, he helped Lil Uzi Vert get out of his contract. Rock Nation helped Meek Mill, and Rock Nation did this, and Jay Z did this, and they even make up fake stories of, oh, Jay Z bought DMX's rights and gave it to his children. Like fake, even fake stories of him doing great things are being made because Jay Z set that image out there where it's like, you know, hey, I'm helping the community. I'm trying to help as much as I can, and I like when Fifty was going on that route, but he kind of swayed away from it. You know, started more things with people. Got someone's chain robbed on stage on a hot nights. Just things like that was just, you know, it's like eventually gets old and it gets like, yo, come on, you've you've grown up now. It is what it is. But I mean, this this is a good incentive. Like six hundred thousand to donate is not chump change, and you know, helping kids. Obviously, education is important. That's the thing that really, if we were all educated to a great level, the world would be a better place. Let's just be honest, because lack of education what causes a lot of problems causes bad communication will cause bad understanding and communication and understanding are so intertwined together that if you have a lack of understanding and lack of communication in topics or just things in general that are important, that's what causes the problems. That's what causes well, lots of things to go wrong. So it's important to invest in education. Hopefully the money goes the right way and it actually goes to the kids and, you know, it improves everything. So shout out to 50 for that, man. Invest, you know, helping out kids and all that. Drake, Drake's doing more business moves, man. And this is this has been weird, man. Every time, now it's like everything that artists invest in is being reported. You know, I talked about this a few few episodes ago, but it seems like everything an artist invest in now is like out in the open. Usually back then it wasn't like that. You know, you'd find out later. I mean, you'd find out here and there about certain things, but.
But now you're finding out about like everything an artist invests into. Every artist that you want to find out about is pretty public knowledge, which is dope because it's educating people, you know, saying, hey, look, artists make smart investments. They do different moves. Obviously, they don't win in everything that they invest in, but, you know, they put their money up for things and they believe in. So this is interesting. Drake invests in a plant-based chicken company, Daring Foods. Now, first, plant-based food has been on the rise in terms of popularity. Plant-based food is like all over the place now. Even at Burger King, they got like some Impossible Whopper or plant-based uh, Burger Fi. A lot of these places have plant-based meats and just plant-based stuff. So this is definitely, this is a smart move because I'm sure down the line, we're going to go through plant-based all, you know, eventually. Because it tastes almost the same. Honestly, I've had a plant-based burger from Burger Fi and to me, it tasted the same. I don't really, much of a difference, tiny bit maybe, but to me, it tasted fine. So I wouldn't mind eating plant-based. I might go down the right down the future. So Drake has diversified his investment portfolio to include mock meat. <laughs> According to Bloomsburg, the 34-year-old Canadian rapper has purchased a stake in Daring Foods, a Los Angeles-based company that specializes in fox chicken. Drake was among those who contributed to Daring Foods Series B funding round led by DJ Capital Partners. The first wave of plant-based was really focused on taste and texture, but then you had to sacrifice other elements like health, said Daring Food CEO Ross McKee, who founded the company alongside Elliot Casas in 2018. The investments will reportedly help Daring Foods expand its retail distribution to more than 4,500 U.S. stores in 2021. Its products are currently available at stores like Kroger, King Supers, King Supers, yeah, I thought it was Scoopers, <laughs> Costco, and Sprouts. So shout out to Drake, man. Smart business move, smart investing, and I'm sure it's going to pay back tenfold. ASAP Rocky, he just covered the, uh, the, what is it, the GQ magazine. He covered it, and he basically made headlines because basically came out and said, yo, I'm dating Rihanna, which is a lot of guys is like dream to do date Rihanna and be with her. I'm sure Drake is like sitting there like, damn, and that could have been me, man. Fuck. But yeah, <laughs> shout out to ASAP Rocky, man. Um, seems like he's taking a whole different route when it comes to life. I don't know. He's been very low key and hasn't been the same bullshit that he used to do. Over the past year, ASAP Rocky has been approaching every aspect of his life with an eye toward life changing ex experimentation. And in a new interview out Wednesday, Testing artist goes deep on how their approach has resulted, resulted in a relationship with Rihanna. The love of my life, Rocky said, of Rihanna in a new GQ cover feature by Samuel Hine. My lady, Rocky said, being in a relationship, particularly this relationship, is so much better than the alternative. She amounts to probably like a million of other ones. I think when you know, you know she's the one, he said. In the summer of 2020, with the world largely on pause due to the pandemic, Rocky and Rihanna took off on a road trip in a tour bus. Rocky said he met myself on this peaceful trip during which he dropped acid and designed clothes as well as worked on new music away from the usual studio setup. The new album, All Smiles, which was described as being around 90% done at the time of the GQ interview, was absolutely influenced by Rihanna. Per Rocky, she's been offering her thoughts throughout the recording process. So it looks like we're probably going to get an ASAP Rocky album this year if it's 90% done. So add ASAP Rocky to that list. Drake, Cole, Kendrick already. I mean, Cole already dropped. Kendrick's probably going to drop. ASAP Rocky. Who knows who else? Um, personally, I've I've lost interest in ASAP Rocky's music. His first album was dope. After that, it just kind of scaled down. And I was like, eh, I'm not really feeling his music anymore. But, you know, we'll see. I mean, Rihanna has great, great taste in music from what I can tell. So... Hopefully she's influenced it in a very positive way. And because usually when you get in a relationship or either like Kanye breaking up with uh, Kim Kardashian, I'm sure that's going to influence his music in a more darker way, but it's going to be better. You know, trauma just with music, trauma and music just come together perfectly like that. And being in love and music does too. But the trauma aspect of it, when you, when you break up with somebody and you're in your feelings and you're in pain, the pain part, is is painted with a brush better when it comes to the music. Like you're using brighter colors with that, you know, which is kind of crazy to say because it's supposed to be darker, but you have more, let's just say you have a better palette of colors to choose from. If I'm wording that right. You have better colors to choose from when you're going through pain because you learn more, you're looking at life differently, you're kind of 
reevaluating yourself. Maybe it was your fault why this all happened. So that that outlook creates for better music. But it could be the opposite too. Like ASAP Rock could be in a loving relationship, which he was missing, he said, and he never found that with anybody else but Rihanna. That could be a great catalyst for amazing music. You know, when you're in love, you're happy. Happy music is great too. So I know Kanye and Dr. Dre too, because Dr. Dre being in divorce, he's probably, he's already working on his album. I don't know if we're getting them this year too. We got Dr. Dre on the list. But Dr. Dre, I'm sure, is going to deliver some amazing music because of the pain, because of the divorce, because of everything that's going on. So, yeah, man, I think pain is the, the a great catalyst for a lot of things. For you being better as a person, for you evaluating your life, the people around you, you know, trauma. You you tend to, you know, what? whenever you ask people the great things that happen in their life, they really don't remember the details that much. You know, they remember things here and there. Like, they'll remember a moment that something happened. They'll be like, oh, shit. Like, they got, like, let's just say an artist, a new deal. They remember that day. But do they remember every single detail? Majority of the time, no. When you're going through pain and trauma and something dramatic happens, you remember the weather. You remember the time. You remember how you were feeling that day. You remember the morning that you woke up. You remember what you ate. You remember every little detail because it was that painful for you. Whether it's somebody passing away, you wake up, you find out somebody passed away. They, that person usually ends up detailing it unless they just like, obviously, and through pain, you can black out and just kind of forget things. But you do remember that day for the most part. The reason why I'm speaking on this is because I've been watching when I released my Eminem versus Michael Jackson video. I've been watching a lot of Michael Jackson videos and I was watching a lot of uh, his family members speak on him passing. And when you speak to them, like when I was watching other interviews where they were talking about great moments that happened to them, they weren't really talking about the details. They just said, yo, this happened. It was amazing, that and that. But when they're talking about Michael Jackson passing away, they could, they could literally, like you could see in their eyes, they could vividly tell you what happened that day. They woke up, this, this, they got a call from this person, this, this time, this, you know, I went over here, this happened, and this, the car I got into, everything. Because trauma, you know, trauma sticks with us more than the great things. The great things do stick with us, but the trauma is what molds us and shapes us to a great person. Sorry for going on that whole rant, but what I'm saying in music, trauma isn't, you know, such a bad thing. It actually creates for better music. And even on the positive end, if you're, you know, happy, you create music, great music too. So speaking of music and music artists, Young Thug got on the Million Dollars Worth of Game podcast again, and they basically asked him, who are your top five rappers? And, I know a lot of people are going to be upset at this list because this is Young Thug. Don't expect, um, I guess, old head thinking, if that's the case, or just old school hip-hop thinking. But this is who he reveals as his top. He begins to lay lay out the entire Young Stoner Life Collective as number one in Rap Today, which is his label. He says his label is number one, which he should say, you know, obviously that's that's you know his own team, so why wouldn't he praise that? And then he moves on to say Lil Baby, Lil Uzi Vert, and Drake. That's four. His his crew, Lil Baby, Lil Uzi Vert, and Drake. This top five rapper is alive, by the way. Then he takes a major pause. Initially says future. Then goes to 21 Savage. And then settles on Kanye West. So the list is his crew, number one. Lil Baby, Lil Uzi Vert, Drake, and Kanye West. Let me know what you guys think of that list. Obviously, these are newer artists, you know. Um, I don't think Young Thug really gives a shit about the older artists or really cares that much to give them that much praise. Um, he also said, uh, he talked about the Jay-Z incident where he said he has more, more uh, stadium anthems than Jay-Z. He basically said, that's all I was saying. I just used his name because he is the biggest guy in the world to me. I just used the name to let the world know, like, yo, I got just as many hits as the biggest guy in the world. I'm doing two hours on stage for real. I don't remember my last hour show, and I don't do too much talking. So that's a clarification on that. But another thing that happened in the interview was Young Thug bet with Gunna that 6 9 was going to snitch. You know, while 6 9 was going through his Rico charges, they bet, gonna bet that it wasn't gonna happen, and then Young Thug said it was going to happen. And they, all they bet was a five thousand dollars. He said a measly five thousand, which is a lot of money, but still to him, obviously, it's not that much. Um, 
What ended up happening, though, is obviously Thug won that bet, but then they ended up betting again on top of that bet. And what they bet was that 6 9 was going to get touched when he got out. You know, he's going to get touched by somebody. Some gang member was going to put his hands on him. And Gunner was like, nope, that's not going to happen. And obviously, Thug lost that bet. So that 5000 he won, he lost again. So he basically didn't win anything. He said, I bet him 5000 that something was going to happen to him too. I don't know why I had that belief. I bet him 5000 that something was going to happen. He's going to get beat up. He's going to have to run out of clubs. Something's going to happen. I lost that fucking bet. Then the pussy-ass guys let that guy in the club. <laughs> So, of course, 6 9 responded to this. He was not going to let some people clown him and be like, yo, somebody was going to put hands on me. He put a photo, which is a Photoshop photo, I believe. I don't know if it's real or not. Where Young Thug's like leaning over and kissing and he has like makeup on. And he says, these are the real guys in Atlanta 2021 slat with laughing emojis and the snake emojis. So he just took out some quick pop shots at Young Thug. But... That's a weird bet to bet some, something's going to happen to somebody. That's kind of, isn't that kind of like wishing death on somebody, technically? But I mean, people don't care because it's 6 9 They're like, I don't give a fuck if hands are put on him. But that is kind of weird. I probably want to bet on something happening to some, somebody. That's, I would I would guess, but I wouldn't bet on it. That's kind of a little whole different level. Billboard Hot 100 update charts I have updated. They updated one day late for some reason. I don't know. They didn't really explain why, but let's go over the charts. Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack have a number one hit with Leave the Door Open. It has peaked at number one. It's been on the weeks. It's been 10 weeks on the chart. It is now finally one. Dua Lipa has a number two hit now with Levitating and with the baby. This is reportedly going to be the next number one hit. So if this happens, the baby then has two number one hits, one with his own track and one featured, which is that's huge. And Dua Lipa is going to get her first number one hit. So shout out to the Albanian queen out there. Peaches with Justin Bieber is number three. Save Your Tears with Ariana Grande and The Weeknd is number four. Went from number one to number four. That's a huge drop. Well, it's not that big of a drop, but Kiss Me More with Doja Cat and SZA is number five. Astronaut in the Ocean, Mass Wolf is number six. Rap Star, Polo G is number seven. Interlude, which is the J. Cole track he dropped off his album, The Loose Track, debuted at number eight. That's a pretty good debut for a fucking interlude. Shout out to J. Cole, number eight. People were expecting to be number one, but I was expecting top ten easily. The Kid Loray with Miley Cyrus, Without You is number eight. Ontario, Lil Nas X is number ten. Miss the Rage with Trippy Red and Playboy Cardi debuted at number 11. That's a good debut. Blinding Lights, The Weeknd, number 12. Calling My Name, Lil TJ Black, number 13. Up, Cardi B, number 14. B-Box is still on the charts, and it's climbing because of all these people doing remixes. He went from number 16 to number 15 now. Uh, driver's license, Olivia, number 16. Let's see where um let's see where these Drake tracks are at. Go over a few other ones. Back in Blood is number 26. On Me, Little Baby is number 25. That went from number 18 to number 25. That's crazy. Let's see. Drake featuring Little Baby Wants and Needs is number 38. That's the only track right now in the charts from those three that came out. Which I said is that's gonna be the one that's gonna last. I can predict that from a mile of fucking way. Little Tekka never, never left. His number debuted at number 56, which is dope. Let's see. See if those other Drake tracks are on here. I don't think they are. Let's see. Don Tolliver, Moneybag Yo. I like my bitches. Red Bone Hello is number 84. Went from number 98 to 84. It's starting to chart. Pop Smoke. Told you, man. They, they, they can't release a new album, man. Wait it out, man. If you're still charting, doing good, why mess that up? Yeah, I'm looking at the charts right now. No, those three tracks that debuted, the top three, the only one that's on there right now is the one with Lil Baby. Like I predicted, that one's going to stay on there for a little while. It's going to be the last one to leave. He's number 39, or number 38, my bad, in the top 40. So, told you. I think it's going to, once the video comes out, I think it's going to be in the top 10 again because that track just needs a music video for that boost. But shout out to Drake, man, Lil Baby. Lil Baby's been killing it right now. That feature with uh, J. Cole, Pride is the Devil, I'm sure that's going to debut high on the charts. I'm willing to predict that track debuts at number 10, or top 10, not number 10, but in the top 10. Hopefully, J. Cole gets a number one track. I'm waiting to see that. I'll update you guys, obviously, on the next Wednesday or Thursday episode that comes out. So 
we'll keep our eye on that. But that's it for the Diverse Mentality Podcast number 50. As you guys know, stream us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Deezer, Pocket Cast, all of that. Appreciate your guys' support. And check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash quake gw i'm gonna be streaming on there when it comes to music gaming all that stuff um yeah check us out on youtube as you guys know thank you for the support we do have a sponsor coming in so i'd appreciate if you guys can support the sponsor that's coming in and these next i don't know what episodes are going to land on but we do got a sponsor and that's all thanks to you guys i really appreciate the support listening watching whatever the case may be that sponsor is all because you guys are supporting and that's the first one so hopefully down the line there's more if there's support, of course, on the sponsor, the feedback is great. You know, you guys support it. Then, of course, they're going to come back and do more. But, yeah, I just want to put out that, put that out there. Thank you guys for the support. It really, truly means a lot to me. And that's it for this episode. Have an amazing day, night, whenever you're listening to this. Have a blessed day. Be safe. Thank you. And peace.